Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Today we're going to be talking about mental health. As a rule, we usually stay away from heavy topics like this, but we are here to give you some tips. Discuss the options you have and hear from DMS students and staff about your choices you can make to help you on your journey through middle school. First, we will give you some tips for helping to maintain a positive mindset here at DMS. One common thread through all these tips is that all or most of them are within your control. It is important to notice which root issues are yours to deal with and which are opposed on us by outside forces. Here's a tip, a healthy body is the first step to a healthy mind. Choices you make about food, sleep, and physical activities will help an influence on your mindset. Try to stay away from electronic devices before bed. Make sure to eat breakfast and think about the effects of caffeine on the growing and developing middle school brain when choosing what to consume. Remember, we have free breakfast here at DMS, so please take advantage of it. Here's a tip. Keeping a healthy outlook involves the kind of people who you, you interact with. Constantly filling your time and using your mental energy on negativity can be exhausting and it works against you. When you're trying to forge a positive relationship with others, talking gossip, spreading rumors, and tossing out lousy <laughs> insults about others keeps us in a negative feedback loop. It can be addicting and even exciting, but what it really does is create a division and make it harder for you and others to feel good about yourself. Here's a tip. Spend your attention buzz it wisely. Whenever someone demands your attention, it reinforces whatever behaviors they are using to steal it away. For example, if a student is consistently disturbing class, they are looking for acknowledgement and positive affirmation of their behaviors from others. Give your attention to negative actions, reinforces the need for negative attitudes, and sends a message to others that these feelings and behaviors are wanted and that there, there's an audience for it. Here's a tip. Take your time. The worst part about feeling anxious is feeling like time is running out and there's little you can do to stop it. Breaking tasks down into smaller bits and making many deadlines can impose yourself can help avoid feeling overwhelmed when the actual due date comes. This way you feel like you're working for yourself and that you can keep ahead of the game whenever a stressful time arises. One last point to remember is that the world we are living in cares an awful lot about perceptions. There are a lot of people who wish to project an image of themselves that is strong, independent, and successful. Very often, this is a front to disguise just how in need of validation and approval they are, especially on social media. Media is 100% just talk and the rest can be made up or fabricated easily. The simple act of comparing oneself to others can make many people feel inadequate or undeserving. But remember, you are a statistic of one and you should do a lot to judge yourself on the merits you choose instead of the criteria other people choose for you. So what options do we have for dealing with problems that arise? Students only deal with problems at home, conflicts with others. and academic stressors that pile on an already teeming amount of anxiety. Even getting started can feel like a struggle sometimes. Some students cope with the tools and habits they form themselves or from their parents. Some students need intervention to cope with these issues. Here are some of the options you have available to you. Safe to say. It's treated like a meme and a joke, pass a threat, but the Safe to Say system is anonymous and effective. Safe to Say was developed by the Pennsylvania Office of the Attorney General to anonymously report warning signs of other students' behaviors, actions, and words. Messages and posts on social media and outside of school interactions are beyond the scope of what teachers and administrators may be able to effectively deal with. So Safe to Say is a safe, effective, and meaningful way to deal with students that are struggling with conflicts and more serious mental health issues. It can't be understated how important it is to have a good support system, but your family, friends, and teachers are here to help you out as well. There are friendships that are more superficial and circumstantial. For example, there is a relationship called Fair Weather Friend. These are called as such because they typically will only help you or want to be around when it's the right for them. 
these aren't bad people necessarily just relationships that aren't as deep as it is important to recognize and the people that will stop what they are doing in any moment to listen and help you even your teachers as unlikely it may seem are always willing to listen and help and if they are unequipped they can point you in the right direction here's our dms guidance team we have our intervention specialist miss huber who is on staff to work with students as issues may arise miss niehoff and miss butler are on staff to help students through career planning counseling and other inter interpersonal or intrapersonal problems that bubble up during school middle school years some students met regularly with the guidance team and some use them as needed. Either way, they have an indispensable part of the DMS team and they are here to help you serve you. What is available to students who are struggling or just need to talk? Um, okay, so our role down here in the counseling office is kind of twofold. We have the academic side of things that can help you with class stuff, but then we also have the uh, social, emotional, and mental health piece of it that we can help you out down here as well. So if you just feel like you're out of sorts or you're not okay, um, you just need to talk to somebody, get something off your chest, which is completely normal. Everybody needs to talk sometimes. We are here for you to just listen and maybe give you some ideas about how to feel better and not feel so stressed out. How does a student ask for help? So asking for help is one of the hardest things to do, especially for boys. Um, but you have to know that it's okay. So you can ask for help just by coming in and saying, hey, can I talk to you a minute? And it might mean we come in and sit down and talk about sports or we talk about your pets or something you're interested in, just so you're comfortable. Why don't more students ask for help? That's a great question. Why don't more people ask and want to talk? Because for years and years and years, it has had this stigma, which means people thought that when you talked about how you felt, that was weak. And that's not true at all. We all have feelings. We all have good times. We all have bad times. Every single one, even the toughest person you might know, still has feelings. Everybody needs to talk. Girl, boy, man, woman, I don't care what you are, green, purple, gray, blue, um, talking to somebody is completely okay because it's okay not to be okay. So please don't ever hesitate. And if you have a friend that you think isn't feeling so well or they're scared to talk to somebody, kind of just tell, tell a teacher, tell another adult that you know, my friend's kind of struggling, so don't be afraid to, you know, support one another because it's all about listening and unpacking the suitcase a little bit so it doesn't seem so heavy when you're dragging it along in life.